Good day. Welcome to Inclusive Education and Specific Difficulties. Uh, supplementary support material for your preparations for the examination for inclusive education. I'm your tutor, Ms. Regina Garises, and we'll go right into how the setting of the examination paper will be. Now, the, the format might, might, might look different, but it's almost the same. And the questions that, that I'll be hand, handling here will be similar, but it's not the questions that are in the examination. And, and I focus on, 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 on the questions that most of the students were struggling during the assignments and also past examinations. So that's where I'm uh, zooming in to, to guide you in how you can prepare for your examinations. We start with the models of special needs education. If one talks about the models, some uh, writing, it, it, it says, it, it talks about the provisions. It talks about the placements that are there for learners of special educational needs. Now, these models, we focus mostly on, on, on the four of them. The first one is inclusion. Second one is mainstreaming, segregation, and exclusion. And again, these are also concepts that you need to know, definitions in special needs education. So let's look at the first one, inclusion. You need to define what is inclusion, and then you need to know what kind of a placement does inclusion entail. If a question, for example, says, discuss the different placement provisions or accommodations, options that are available in Namibian education system, then you need to know that it's inclusion, that is, the learners are in a mainstream school, and then the learners are placed either in, in, a, in, in, a, in, a, in a mainstream grade or in a learning support uh, class. That's now the mainstream. And then you need to define also what is a mainstream. Secondly, thirdly, also segregation. What is segregation? Segregation was at a special function when it was done in case of special classes. And that, and that was needed when the learners with disabilities were placed in the special classes where their needs were met. Then you need to know what is a special class again. And the last one is exclusion. What is exclusion? Exclusion is meaning that the learners are totally not in, even in a school, but some might even be placed in a special school. Now, those are the four placement provisions, or we say accommodations, options that are available. Now, if you hear the word accommodation, we don't talk about housing. Accommodation is mostly about what options are there, how can I help you out? That those are the provisions that we are talking about when we say accommodation. And this term will come again when we are doing assessment. Talks about assessment accommodations that are there for learners with special educational needs. But when we come there, we'll handle it there. And then the, the second point that I really want to focus on is also, also on the legislations for protecting the rights of people with special needs. There are two conferences that took place. And you need to know those two conferences. Firstly, define what are those, what were those conferences about, and then you you, you need to know the decisions that were taken at those conferences. A question might be phrased like, discuss how the two international conferences influenced the current state of inclusive education in Namibia. Now, if one talks about discussion, then discuss is again another verb that you need to know. But down in, in the slides, I'll explain the terms again there for you. Now, for example, what I took here, it, it's a first conference was the World Conference on Education for All, short EFA. Now, then you need to define who, what was the objective of this conference and what decisions were taken at this conference that influenced our current state of inclusion in Namibia. Now, the examples that I given was that uh, this conference took place because of the inad inadequacies that were taking place in the world education all over. And, and, and its it, it, it main aim was to er eradicate the adult illiteracy and also to provide universal primary education for all the children. Now, if we bring it down to Namibian situation, then we see also in our education system, we have free and compulsory primary education. Those are one of the things that was influenced by the decisions that were taken at those conferences. So if you can have it uh, in, in globally, but then, then bring it down nationally to our level in Namibia. That's how I want you to answer those questions if it comes. And, and another point in, 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 in Unit 5, this actually Unit 5 and 8 that, 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 that was also a bit problematic for most of you, 
In Unit 5, it talks about the features and techniques of working with children who have special educational needs. Now, there are different special educational needs. And the focus here is on how can I get the red flags? How can I diagnose that this child is having albinism or Down syndrome or it's an autistic child? And then secondly, how do I support this child? Those are two things that you need to focus on. Now, uh, in, 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 in the first presentation, I advise you all to, to summarize it, to do a mind map. Write down albinism. Look at five features of albinism. Features, what is that? What things are there in these uh, special needs or disability that shows me that this child is having albinism? And then secondly, how can I support this child? Now, describe, it's a verb that you need to know. It, it says, provide detailed features of an issue or state of process in a logical sequence using numbers, headings, or proper sentences. So the, the examples that I've given there are, these children have difficulties in establishing social relations, they do not form connections, avoid eye contact. Now, you discuss these, these features that, that you know that Oh, these are the warning signs that shows me the child is having albinism. That's how you describe it. And then this, the supporting techniques, then another example that I took here, it's uh, epilepsy. Now, discuss techniques of working with children of epilepsy. Now, it, it means techniques of working with, techniques of supporting these learners who are, who are epileptic. So it, it, it means uh, if a child is having a seizure, do you, do, you, do you need to continue with the lesson? No, you need to stop and, and, and assist the child and see how you can support the child. Try to, 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 after doing that, then this learner, because he or she might have blanked out and don't remember what happened, then you need to repeat that lesson or support the learner and, and give them extra support in, in, in terms of what the, the, the lesson was that time. And, and, and then uh, the, the, the third bullet there, it says, establish a body, stays, uh, a body system for child with seizures. This, the, 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 the child or the learner's friend might know that how can I support uh, my friend when I see the signs that are coming that the child might have a seizure. That's in terms of epilepsy. Now, if you compare the two exit learning outcomes in this unit, it's about supporting techniques and warning signs. Focus on those two. And uh, unit eight, this is, it, this is actually in unit eight. I've jumped unit uh, seven and six, because that one is about abuse. So there, I'd, uh, most of you didn't experience most of the problems. But another problem that came in was the one of the physically impaired learners. Now, many of you are calling me and asking me, but ma'am, what is a physical impairment? Is, is, is hearing impairment also a physical impairment? Yes. Now, here I've given you a definition of a physical impairment. And the rest of, 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 of uh, impairments like sensory, speech, epilepsy, amputation, all of them are falling under the heading of physically impaired learners. And that, it would say, it's an umbrella term that, that guides us to say, if one talks about physical impairment. But in our case here, I will zoom down to the specific uh, impairment that is there, uh, and say, say, for instance, sensory impairments. We take the example of hearing impairment. If one talks about sensory, it's about senses. So senses both uh, in speech, in, 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 in smelling, in hearing, all of them are senses. But here we focus both mostly on the hearing impairment and visual impairment. Now let's look at hearing impairment and discuss the causes of hearing impairment. Now if a term comes that says discuss, what does it mean? Discuss means you must give a clear description and then you argue out by pointing to the both positive and negative features, and then you come to a conclusion. All of these terms, I, I will also give you a, 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 a extra note on that. You will get it on, on, on your portals that you will get uh, uh, extra support on how you can uh, understand these terms, these verbs, and then answer the questions accordingly. So if it says discuss the causes of hearing impairment, it can be due illness in the mother during pregnancy, complications during birth. Now, all of them are now the list. I've listed them that way. And then I've taken the first heading that says 
due to illnesses in the mother. Now you discuss that point to say a mother might have hereditary factors, for example, a marriage among the family members where one member might be a carrier of a gene that is causing deafness of both, both uh, that might also cause uh, uh, hearing impairment. So less the points and then you start to give a clear description and you argue both the positive and the negative points of that uh, impairment. The term techniques, it's problematic. Most of you don't understand and, and employ it and support. Now, if one talks, ask you the question to say, which techniques might be employed to support a learner with speech impairment? Now, those terms employed, then, then most of you will think about employment and then you are asking, answering that way. Now, a term like employed means what actions what can you put to service, make use of particular purpose? It doesn't mean, or it doesn't focus on employment, but it, it, it's a term that is used to, 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 to get the support that is needed for this learner. Now, understand the terminology in the context of a disability or the impairment that was asked in the question. Let me read that question again. Which techniques might be employed to support a learner with speech impairment? Now, all, of, all, all the three that I've highlighted there, I've explained them to you. Support means you aid, you help, you endorse, you strengthen, you defend. Uh, techniques means a practical method to do some uh, particular task. Employed, again, put in service, action. Now, the examples that I've given you, at least have, have, have five supporting techniques that you know about each and every impairment or the disability. Teach the child things that interest a child. Follow the children's lead. Ask questions that the child would tend to explain more uh, with words like why did, what happened. They will encourage the learners to, to explain more. Try to, to, to be humorous because the, the child is already anxious of or, or, or speaking. So relax the child and then the child can for sure uh, uh, speak very com comfortably in that classroom setting. So those are the, those, those are the supporting techniques that you need to uh, give me in, in, in examination. Again, remember, it's not necessary that this question will come in, but the format that, that, that I really want you to answer the questions are to look at the verbs and then use the verbs to, 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 to engage in the question and give forth the, the, the answers that are needed and not uh, different things that the terms that you are reading there. Another, another section that you were having difficulties about, it's about assessment approaches and issues with learners of learning difficulties. Assessment approaches, they are different approaches. For example, a question might come that says that less the traditional approaches to assessment. Now, when you list something, you give or you list or you name individually by a name. You just say, hey, intelligent test, achievement test, visual motor integration, language testing. Those are the ways that you are listing the types of uh, 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 traditional approaches that are there. Now, if somebody says, describe some. Now, firstly, I ask the question of saying list. And secondly, it's describe some of the traditional approaches to assessment. Now, you need to list them and you need to give a description of those approaches. Distinguish, I'm still with the same approaches to different assessment that learners can have. Now here, the question might be, distinguish between alternative assessments. Now, the approaches to assessment can be traditional and can be alternative. Now, if one says distinguish, what does it mean? Distinguish is to say you describe two phenomena for things that are accordingly to, 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 a, to a relevant criteria to say, yes, it's alternative assessment, but I need to point out the differences between these two assessments. It's the same as you are, you are, you are con contrasting. Now, in alternative assessment, we have the performance test or the authentic assessment. The best that I can advise you here is to know the terminology, what is alternative assessment? And if I know what the alternative assessments are, then I can list out the two different types of assessments within alternative assessment. But now, when one comes to alternative assessment, there are also different approaches within it. 
and that's where we come in to talk about assessment accommodations. And, and, and here I've seen that many are again having problems and the term comes again, accommodations. If the question comes and says, describe different assessment accommodations, again, describe, what does it mean? Give a detailed feature of an issue at state or at the end, and then you provide a logical process of, of explaining that concept. Different assessment argumentation. Assessment argumentations, assessment modifications. How do I support a learner of special educational needs? If this learner can write, this learner can speak, if this learner is having a, a visual or, or a hearing problem. Now, these are the accommodations we're talking about. Presentation, a response, setting, time, timing, and schedule accommodations. I've just listed them there, but you need to go in depth to describe each and every one of them and provide examples, if you're having examples also, of the cases that you can have, or examples of type of a disability that you can uh, support in that regard. And then last section that I've also seen that most students are having problem with, it's an IEP, the System of Individual Education Plan. Now, with, within this exit learning outcome, the main point that you need to know is to know the stages. Now, once you know the stages, the questions can be phrased differently. A question can, can come and say, a list the stages and then describe. Or it can say, discuss the importance of evaluation stage. It's now one of the stages within the, within the IEP stages when you are going through to, to, to support uh, to give the support that this learner might need. The focus can be on the stages, which says identify the stages to support, or it can be you can list the stages or you can discuss. Again, know all the stages and application of those stages within. So all that is done in, in each and every state, you need to know about it and you need to describe what's happening there. And another example that, that, that might come is to say, discuss how schools in Namibia implement the individual education plan. And what I've seen, they, they, uh, at the end of your study guide, there is an answer that says that uh, this concept is not practiced in Namibia, and many of you are losing out marks because you are giving that answer. But your exit learning outcome states clearly that says that you need to know what is an IEP. And many of you give that answer, and then you are losing marks because you write Individual education plan is not practiced in Namibia and 25 marks are being uh, lost there that because you've just stated that sentences. So it means this answer, however it, it is given that way in your study guide, the fact remains that the course requirements ask you to know the process of IEP and the implementation of it. So rather shy away from answering or giving me that statement in the examination of a question that is 25 marks, worth a 25 marks, because you, you might be losing on, on marks. Know the IEP based, uh, faces. Another question might come that says the IQ, the validity of the following statement. The effects of cerebral palsy can be managed with a correct intervention. What does it mean to argue the validity of the statement? It means you give reasons, or you cite evidence in support of that idea. That idea is a statement. The effects of cerebral palsy can be managed with correct intervention. Now you need to focus on how it can be managed, how can the cerebral palsy be managed, or how can it be supported? And then you can also discuss the, the, the main features of cerebral palsy, and based on the features, then you make a judgment on how it can be managed, or how it can be uh, supported with, with. The whole statement, you need to analyze it. But know what, what terms are being used within that statement. Manage with correct intervention. And then you listen, you discuss the supporting techniques. That's how you need to answer that kind of a, a type of a question, actually. Another question might be, uh, investigate an assessment method that is ideal for a pre-primary class. Investigate means you need to identify details or features of something, of the problem systematically and discuss them according to a given directive and then draw a conclusion.
Now, at Lena with, within a pre-primary phase, firstly, it's a difficulty in reading and writing. And that also goes back to Lena's special needs that says that some of them can read, can write, can hear, and can speak. Now, if that's the case, now, which method is the best to support this learner? That's actually the answer here. And then you need to state those methods systematically and discuss them accordingly. So if you say that I will assess this child uh, through a pen and paper method, then for sure already they, we, we say that, no, but that, that's not inclusive. That one might only cater for learners that can read and write and that can hold a pencil or that can write with a pen. Now, zooming down to say how you assess a learner who can read or, or cannot write. And that, that was now the last section that, that, that most of the learners of, and the students were having uh, uh, challenges with within assignment and examination. And another challenge that I can also put for is that most of you don't read the questions. And then, here I'll emphasize again, you say, read your question. Ensure that you understand the questions before you attempt to answer. Focus on both the verb and the descriptions of the terms that are given in the main questions, as examples that I've given uh, uh, prior to coming here. Now the questioning verbs. Now the questioning verbs, you can find them in your study guide on page five, and, and I've also given an extra, extra support material for you based on the Bloom's taxonomy that can guide you also. Very importantly, no different definition of, definitions of disabilities. I see that most of the students are getting confused between epilepsy and autism. Try, try to differentiate those two disabilities and then also Down syndrome. Uh, the concepts, we say concepts, what are the concepts? Concepts are the terminologies that are being used in the study guide that is, that, that is relevant to inclusive education. Know those concepts. It's, it's not only one that is coming out. For, for, for example, inclusion is also another concept. Uh, integration is a concept that you need to know. Focus on what the question is asking and not just on the concepts that might stood out in the question. For example, Discuss the appropriate assessment accommodations for learners with visual impairment. Now, if we go back to the definition of, or the, the, the questioning verb of term discuss, understand that again. What does the term discuss mean? Appropriate assessment accommodations. Appropriate assessment accommodations are about assessment methods that will suit a learner with, uh, with visual impairment. Describe those methods, discuss its advantages and disadvantages, and now you conclude why this method is the best for that uh, given disability. Again, we looked at the assessment accommodations, there is four of them, but then here it's specifically to, the, to visual impairment. And lastly, what I've given you, it's again also a picture on, on, on the thinking skills that are relevant to the type of the questions that are asked. Evaluation questions, uh, synthesis, analysis, applications, comprehensions, and knowledge questions. Knowledge questions can ask you terms like define, describe, duplicate, name, list. All of them fall under the knowledge questions. Now, these are the, these are the categories or the or the taxonomies that are found within Bloom's definition or how he's, how he's defining concepts and how he's defining verbs that, 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 that says what type of a thinking skill does this question require. Application questions will come. Comprehension questions will come that will say defend, describe, discuss. But there is a thin line between comprehension and knowledge questions that you need to understand. So go through this, uh, this, this, this diagram and also the supplementary material that will come, go through them and understand these concepts that will guide you on how you can answer the examination questions. And here, lastly, it's contact details again. Uh, weekdays means weekdays mean from from a Monday up to Thursday, because Fridays then 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 Fridays falls under the weekdays so a, a weekend Saturday. But for the weekends from three o'clock to five o'clock. 
contact me on Saturdays. Then, then we can go go through the questions that you are asking me. And if my phone is busy, the line is busy, leave a text message, because I might be supporting or helping another student that might need help. And with that, all the parts of the examination, uh, prepare well. Try to body, uh, body up with somebody that, that can help you, to support you, if you don't understand the questions. Again, all the best, and education is the greatest and the biggest equalizer for all of us.